Hi everyone, my name is Marian Haynes and today I'm going to run you through the basic operation of the Axio Imager Upright Microscope by Zeiss. I've made a colour by numbers guide to get you through. Now this microscope is by Zeiss but other microscopes will be quite similar and so you'll find these things also applicable. First things first is the eyepieces. That's labelled number one, that's pretty easy. You can move them out or inwards depending on the spacing between your eyes and what feels comfortable for you. See there's a red dot and a white dot. Normal viewing you want to line that zero up with that white dot on each side. The second one is the binocular tube. Right before that light exits the microscope, it's going to go through the binocular tube and then it's got two options. The first is normal operation where it comes to your eyes and the second is that you um, direct the light path instead upwards to, for example, a camera attachment if you have one. So you can put the camera attachment on top connect it to a computer and you can take pictures if you like or videos or you can even look at uh, a live feed basically of what's underneath your microscope. Then the next part is the light sources. So with this type of microscope you have two options for light sources which means you can do a different, a whole bunch of different types of microscopy. Today we'll be looking at bright field in particular but just keep in mind you might need to change the light source depending on what type of microscopy you'd like to do. So if you look at the back of the microscope, number three here is the reflected light illuminator. So it's just a light, it's an LED um, usually, and that light will come through the microscope, go down onto your microscope slide and get reflected back up through to your eyes. And the second option, which is what we use for bright field, is the transmitted light illuminator, which is at the bottom at the back. So that light comes through the base of the microscope and then up through the bottom through that illuminated spherical disc that you'll see that you have to remember to take the cover off. Light comes through through your specimen and up to your eyes. Okay, number six, the mechanical stage. So the mechanical stage houses your specimen. So when you finish setting up your slide, then you'll put that onto your stage and clip it into position. Above the stage is the nose piece. The nose piece is where all of the objective lenses attach to and you can rotate it around. So going through the microscope, thinking about it as a whole, there are five different sources of magnification. So the first one to three are your three different objective lenses. So they give you variability. The second is whether you're using the eyepiece or the camera. If the light's going through the eyepiece, you get an extra times 10 magnification, but if it's not, you lose that. And then on the side of the microscope, there's a little wheel where you can flick between 1 and 1 1.6 times magnification. Now, the condenser is a lens that lies below the stage. The condenser collects light from below, so diffuse light going in all directions. And it condenses it into a single stream of light, which is focused onto your specimen. So by moving the stage up and down, really what you're doing is moving the condenser and the stage together closer and further away from your objective until you hit that nice, um, that nice focus. Now the next thing is number nine, which is the reflector turret. So inside this reflector turret, we've got six different spaces that can hold six different reflectors. So you've got that many options. Um, you probably won't need to use all of them. In bright fields, we want to have one of those empty so the light can travel straight through, um, so it can be straight transmitted, right, because we're using transmitted light. But if you're using reflected light for a technique, for example, DAPI staining to look at DNA, you would use the DAPI specific reflector within that reflected turret. So this is the inside of the reflected turret. Up the top you'll see it says 4, but that's not the real number of here. 4 is on the opposite side, right? So this one is actually one. Now, one has nothing in it, you can see that. And that's because if we look at the cap of this, one is for bright fields. Um, and bright field doesn't require anything in this reflector turret because that transmitted light is just coming straight up and going straight through to the eyepieces. Now I'm going to move on and describe the two diaphragms that are really important inside the microscope. So you can adjust the aperture of these diaphragms to get the perfect illumination of your specimen. So these two diaphragms, what are they for? The aperture diaphragm gathers light from the source and concentrates it into a beam with uniform intensity over the entire view field of your specimen. 
whereas the luminous field diaphragm determines the location and the size of the illuminated specimen. So the top right image shows you the difference between a wide and narrow um, aperture diaphragm difference, and then the bottom example shows you the difference between a completely open and somewhat closed luminous field diaphragm. So where are these diaphragms? The aperture diaphragm, otherwise known as the iris diaphragm, um, exists immediately above the condenser lens and so below the stage. Whereas the luminous field diaphragm is located in the base of the microscope, so in the stand, above that um, transmitted light source. This is quite confusing, especially if you can't see it um, or you don't completely understand what they do. So the aperture diaphragm, um, here's an example of a video. And so this is if you just film um, from underneath the stage. All right, first things first, how do you actually change the uh, aperture of these diaphragms? So with the aperture diaphragm, what you do is there's a little sliding um, button on the front. And then with the luminous field diaphragm, there's a wheel on the side of the microscope labeled F. And you move it up and down. Okay, so with going through all of these things, that's great, but why? Why do we need to know this? Number one, and the first, I guess, and only reason this, so you get the best microscope image possible. So to do this, we want to set the microscope up in um, the method of Kohler illumination. So Kohler illumination focuses everything ideally so you get the best results. So how do we do this? We want to use transmitted light because we're using bright fill. Adjust the image brightness so you want to start at around 50% I would say. You position a high contrast specimen, so something that would be usually very easy to see underneath the microscope. Then you're going to move the condenser to the upper stop, so you're going to wheel all the way up and you're going to make sure that when you put your slide onto the stage, the condenser and the specimen, so the slide, do not touch. Focus on the specimen with a times 10 objective. Number six, okay, here's now where we're using our diaphragms and why this was important. You're going to close a luminous field diaphragm using that F wheel on the side until it's in your field of view. So as you look down the microscope, what you're going to see is the edges of that diaphragm moving in. It won't be in focus at this point in time, so you're going to adjust um, the condenser by using the focusing knobs until it is. So that would be moving down the stage until you can um, really easily see the edges of that diaphragm. I think it's got more edges than an octagon, but you'll see that that's basically the shape. Underneath the stage where your condenser sits, there's some centering screws. So if you turn them left or right either side, what you're going to do is move the condenser around. So you're going to adjust that condenser until the, the edges of the luminous field diaphragm that you've set um, are in the center. Then you're going to open back up the luminous field diaphragm so the edges are just beyond your field of view. So you've got that nice white plane again. Next step, you're going to pull out one of the eyepieces carefully. You're going to look through with your naked eye and you will see um, some light travelling to you. That light shouldn't completely fill that uh, eyepiece. So what you want to do is adjust the aperture diaphragm until two-thirds of your view down the eyepiece is eliminated. So you're going to bring it in or take it out depending on where it's sitting to reach two-thirds of that view. So a white circle within a larger black circle and then you put the eyepiece back in. Now, if you do it at times 10, it'll be pretty good. If you want a really good view at a higher magnification, then you want to repeat at each magnification. And then, yeah, go have a coffee and enjoy your new level of accomplishment, knowing that you're getting the best image available on your Axio Imager.